Mount Bellu on Craigon, which means the rocky place. A rocky place refers to a harsh landscape on which it is hard to sustain life. Mount Bellu is the opposite of this. It's a green landscape, full of life. And on that landscape, there is a community that is strong and growing. Education is very important to the development of a community. It provides people with opportunities and skills that in turn help the area prosper. Holy Rosary College is at the heart of Mount Bellew's growth. <laughs> we don't want to hear you! Um, Maureen Walsh, principal since 2011. Um, to look at the development of Holy Rosary College, we start back in 1965 when Sister Dimpna and the Sisters of the Christian Retreat opened a co-ed school here in the town. It started with very few students, and the school has grown to the present number. We have almost 570 students today. A lot of that growth uh, is dependent on Holy Rosary College being a very successful community of staff, management, students and parents. The history of the school, I suppose, always entailed uh, the acquisition of a gym and sports facilities and specialist classrooms. The application for that gym, uh, Sister Dimpna looked for that gym back in the 70s and we're absolutely delighted that on the 4th of March 2016 that gym and the rest of the school will be opened officially. As part of any building um, or refurbishment, the Department of Education has what's called a percent for art scheme and based on the total cost of the, the project, we get a percent for art. And we're absolutely delighted that a man from Athenry, Donica Cattle, was the person successful. The courtyard will be developed under the guidance of Donica. It will include beautiful areas of planting, shrubbery, um, perennial flowers, and it will contain the story of Holy Rosary College. Monica has asked me here today to have a look at the potential for the courtyard within the new school development. Um, I think through a design process you know, there is loads of opportunity here to create a very interesting space for the staff and the kids that use the school. They, they need to be comfortable within that space and they need to have a certain amount of privacy. That they, they, They're no longer interested in being all, all placed in one big area, they like to have individual spaces. So I see this garden as being a journey where kids can come out, they can separate, they can go to different corners and they can enjoy that. I am interested in other people's stories and finding a way of representing them through my art. I ran a series of workshops in the school with the students so I could get to know them and involve them in the project. 
This is their school, so they should have an input into the commission. seen us kind of walking around the last few weeks wondering what we're doing. Um, basically, I want you to be involved in this project as well, right? Um, I, want, I just want you to fill out this little, uh, two questions, right? And what I'm going to ask you is, in your opinion, what is the importance of the subjects you teach, and how do you think it will benefit students in practically in the future, okay? So when you answer this, when you give this back to me, I'm going to hand it over to some of the TYs. It is equally important for the staff to be involved. It is vital that their thoughts and opinions are represented in the court chart. But, but, so it's just to get back to the students so they can interpret um, your ideas. Chciałbym znów blisko marzeń być. Podaj mi dłoń od tych czterech ścian gdzieś choćby ja najdalej. Wiesz, życie bym dał, byś nie musiał bać się o to, co straciłem sam. Dudaka believes that the art, the present for art, or indeed any art piece, should tell a story. And the story of the art piece that Dudaka will be uh, working on is the story of the development of Holy Rosary College, starting with the foundation of the Sisters of the Christian Retreat, who are the founders of the school. The Sisters of the Christian Retreat are the founders of the school. They were essential in the development of Mount Bellew community. During my workshops with the fourth year students, we decided how best to represent them in the courtyard. We focused on the challenge of their journey from France, where they were exiled during the French Revolution and the path that brought them to Mount Bellew. The students also have their own personal journey from first year to leave and start to talk about. From the very first moment the first years arrive through the doors of HRC, they're on a new adventure. They are introduced to a new world full of learning, new experiences and friendships. After working their way up through school, they are equipped with the knowledge and skills to take flight into a world full of potential. Okay, so, uh, okay, well, act, well, uh, am I saying that wrong? Can I go around? Um, 
groups of animals. What do you kind of what do you kind of put in yourself like there? Sorry? Dogs. Dogs. Um, so it's this. I'm trying to bring an element of humour into it because otherwise it's going to be very kind of serious out there. Okay. Uh, okay. So which? Okay. So the dog. I asked members of the staff to tell me something about themselves that the other teachers or students may not know. My idea was to represent these life experiences through a group of animals. The teacher shared some very interesting experiences such as delivering aid to Siberia, running an ice cream van in the Aran Islands, being a tour guide in a whiskey distillery, taking part in amateur dramatics, and one teacher even broke an arm in the pursuit of love. the development of this art project that Dunica is working on, uh, he interviewed a number of teachers to find out, I suppose, what made them tick, why they became teachers and why they became teachers of the particular subject that they are teaching at the moment. And I smiled when I saw those, photo those questions because they're the questions that a lot of those teachers would have been asked at interviews when they were applying for the job here. Why did they become a teacher and why did they become a teacher of the subject? When I was in school, I would sometimes question the relevance of certain subjects to my future, but I have since realised how all-encompassing art can be. Depending on the various projects I am working on, I may need to reference and use such subjects as history, geography, maths, English, business studies and so on. For this reason, I thought it was very important to explore the practical importance of every subject taught in Holy Rosary College. What inspired you to be a teacher? Um, I think what inspired me mainly was the fact that I had good experience in school myself and I just wanted to go forward with that and repeat it for the likes of me. Um, yeah, I think that's why I decided to become a teacher. I like to work with my hands, uh, work with materials, and that's what inspired me, and also design as well. Why do you like teaching? My favourite teacher in school was my accounting teacher, so I kind of wanted to em emulate what she did, and then, um, I couldn't get a job in business studies, so I went and did maths after that as well. And um, so, and I love maths actually now, but I wouldn't have been one that I would have predicted I would have ended up teaching, but I do love it. What does the subject mean to you? Um, well, I'm very passionate about science um, because science is so important to um, the world around us at the moment. Um, and every student, I believe, should take science at junior cycle. Here we're lucky because it's um, mandatory, everybody has to. But some schools they don't, and I believe most students should have a grounding in science before they leave secondary school. What frustrates you as a teacher? Um, what frustrates me sometimes is um, just when maybe when students don't really appreciate 
what they, the chances that they have to learn things. I suppose where I really see that is I, I used to work abroad in Africa for a while, and just you could have 50 students in front of you and pure silence, just soaking up everything you tell them. And then when you've got other students in front of you and um, here is in the classroom, and they just don't appreciate what they've got and how much they can learn. And especially when you know what they could do with their lives if they just spent a little bit more time thinking about what they can learn and what they can soak up. Yeah, so that's frustrating sometimes when you know, especially when you see talent passing by. Yeah. How do you engage with the students? Um, well, I try to go by a maxim that we were taught in college to be firm, fair and friendly with students. And I think it all boils down to one word, respect. I think if, if you can genuinely respect your students, they'll see that and they in turn will give respect back to you. And I think, I think I have that. I used to engage, I think, an awful lot more so when I was involved in musical in school. And uh, now I suppose the engagement is largely within the classroom. Um, trying to get through a curriculum is, is probably so much pressure at this stage that there isn't a whole lot of opportunity to engage in any other way. In what way do you encourage creativity in your classroom? So I suppose you try to inspire ideas or welcome ideas. If somebody has an original thought, I think that's great, even whether it's right or wrong or whether it's difficult or not. Just any idea is welcome. Can I have a minute, no? Yeah, I can give you a minute. <laughs> it's like an interview. Um, how do I encourage creativity? What's it, Mr. Quinson? <laughs> um, well, if some of you know what I do the side fest, so I'd like to think that you know the next thing we do outside school um, is just you know doing science projects with the students and getting them to come up with ideas, and it's just uh, fascinating the ideas they come up with. Um, some fantastic projects I've gotten with the awards over the years, so it's it's wonderful to see the ideas the students can come up with. How do you think it would benefit students back to it? in the future? Um, I definitely think with history it's important for students to know about the past. It's important for all of us to know about the past because we can learn from the mistakes that were made in the past in, and ensure that we don't make those kind of mistakes in the future. More different What would you be if you weren't a teacher? Um, I think I would have, yeah, I had psychology down. I, I think I, that's what I would have gone for if I hadn't gone for teaching. Um, and why? Um, just because I think there, I think there's a lot of that in teaching as in getting to know people and getting to see how they work and what works best for them and um, I ended up going for teaching because I had business studies and I loved that um, but yeah I just, I like that, I like getting to know people and I like interacting with people. Okay. That's it? Okay, okay. perfect. Cut. Thank you. It's probably nerve wracking just like to you be in front of a teacher sometimes probably. Yeah. Yeah.
actually getting to work with everyone else and kind of take this idea and you know combine it with something that someone else said and we actually I remember having a big board and we just kept drawing up and if anyone walked in and saw it you wouldn't know what was happening but because we all worked together to come up with it it made sense to us like all the different things kind of tied together and I liked that there were a lot of different ideas and when you just heard them all separately you wouldn't think they go together but we kind of put them all so that they fit and it was everyone like I, I think everyone had something to do with it and some idea that went into it um, it's kind of amazing it's weird to think that all all the little ideas that didn't really fit in your head and now it, it looks like something and it was not only like Irish but it was something that we could use and it's something that's going to be there like long after we're gone and we're doing other things and we paraglide in a way that you know other students in like 10 or 15, 20 years time you can go up there and see that. Is there. Did you see the ice cream? Yeah. Uh, this park used to have an ice cream van. That's right. But that actually That's right, yeah. That refers to us teachers kind of they pass professions of what they did yeah. before the decision with the meerkat. Yeah, <laughs> well, you did. I blame me. See that's the whole thing. That's why I put the decisions. So <laughs> no, if Maureen no, no. if Maureen goes, what the hell? What I the just, hell? You can just blame just the teachers. Well. Thank <laughs> you. 